Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 20th of September. PM Modi to embark on visit to US to meet Quad leaders and address UNGA summit. Pakistani police kill second blasphemy suspect within a week. And with eyes on economy, Sri Lankans to vote for president in tight election. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will embark on three-day visit to the US from September 21 to participate in the fourth Quad Leader Summit and address the Summit of the Future at the UN General Assembly. Making his pit stop in Delaware, PM Modi will join Australia's Anthony Albanese, Japan's Fumio Kishida and US President Joe Biden for the Quad Leader Summit where leaders are expected to speak about conflict between Beijing and its neighbours in the South China Sea. The other topics of discussions are likely to be the stepped-up security cooperation in Indian Ocean, technology and infrastructure measures. PM Modi will later also hold a meeting with Indian diaspora and CEOs of leading US-based companies. He is also likely to meet Republican presidential candidate and former President Donald Trump during his U.S. visit. The fact that he's coming all the way from there to here is very, very exciting. And I'm looking forward to him uh, enabling easier immigration for people here. The Indian diaspora making our lives easier with you know, visas and being able to travel back to the world, bringing more um, investments back to India, more opportunities for students to come here to the U.S. So basically making it easier and easier day by day um, for both the countries, U.S. and India. Uh, I've been super excited to see Modi, to be honest. He has done amazing work in India. The bullet train initiatives, the electrification of railway network, Pakka Makan, Swaj Bharat, I Nagpur in Nagpur, so Metro over there, uh, Nitin Gadkari, sir. It has been amazing to see this man revolutionary uh, make India great again, and I really love his um, aura and his energy when he comes. And as after Reuters reported that artillery shells sold by Indian arms makers have been diverted to Ukraine and New Delhi has not intervened to stop the trade despite protest from Moscow, India has termed the reports as speculative and misleading. The news agency citing officials had alleged the transfer of munitions to support Ukraine's defence against Russia has occurred for more than a year, which attracted protest by Kremlin on at least two occasions, including during a July meeting between foreign ministers of Russia and India. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Randhi Jaiswal in a statement said the report implies violations by India when none exist and hence is inaccurate and mischievous. India has been carrying out its defence exports, taking into account its international obligations on non-prolification and based on its own robust legal and regulatory framework, the statement added. India has warm ties with Russia, its primary arms supplier, for decades and Prime Minister Narendra Modi has refused to join the Western-led sanction regime against Moscow. New Delhi has called for peaceful resolution for the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. And weeks after India notified Pakistan to amend changes in the six-decade-old Indus Water Treaty, Islamabad has said it is ready to hold discussions within the treaty's existing framework. Answering a query during the weekly briefing, Foreign Office spokesperson Mumtaz Zehra Balot said the Indus Waters Treaty is an important treaty that has served both Pakistan and India well over the last several decades. She said Pakistan is fully committed to implementation of the Water Treaty and expects the same from India. Baloch added the permanent Indus Commission is the appropriate forum for discussion and addressing all issues related to the treaty. The Indus Water Treaty was signed by India and Pakistan in 1960 to govern the use of cross-border rivers between the two countries. According to the pact, Indus, Jhelum and Chenab waters were allocated to Pakistan while India has rights over the eastern rivers 
Ravi, Bias and Satluj. However, New Delhi has time and again sought review of the treaty, citing Pakistan's failure to cooperate in implementation. India has expressed concern over various issues, including demographic changes, environmental challenges and most importantly, new security realities. Moving on, police in southern Pakistan have reported that a blasphemy suspect was killed in a shootout during a raid intended to arrest him. This marks the second such incident in the country known for draconian blasphemy laws. A report. Police in Umarkot in Pakistan, Sindh province have reported that a doctor facing allegations of blasphemy against Islam was killed in a shootout during a raid intended to arrest him. Police identified the man as Shah Nawaz who had gone into hiding two days ago after his clinic was vandalized over accusation that he shared blasphemous content against Prophet Muhammad on social media. Videos circulating on social media showed local clerics throwing rose petals at police and praising officers for killing the blasphemy suspect. The killing has, however, drawn strong condemnation from the human rights organizations. The incident comes a week after another blasphemy suspect was killed by police in custody in Balochistan's Quetta. However, the tribe and family of the killed man said they forgave the officer in the name of God. Blasphemy is punishable by death in predominantly Muslim Pakistan, but no one has been executed by the state for the crime. But dozens of those accused have been lynched by mobs before trial. Last year, a mob in Punjab province attacked churches and homes of Christians over alleged desecration of pages from a Quran. The attack drew nationwide condemnation, but Christians say the men linked to the violence are yet to be put on trial. Moving on, activists of the Baloch National Movement held a photo exhibition this week outside the UN office in Geneva to put a global spotlight on Pakistani atrocities in Balochistan. Take a look. Members of the Baloch National Movement this week held a photo exhibition outside the UN office in Geneva, aiming to draw global attention to the human rights crisis in Balochistan and highlight how the Pakistani state is carrying out a systematic genocide in the region. The exhibition was part of BNM's three-day campaign in Geneva during the 57th UNHRC session. The activists flagged concern over abductions and enforced disappearances of Baloch people by the Pakistani military and emphasized the need for immediate global intervention. Today, we can say Balochistan is a military garrison and we can say it, is a, it has been turned into a slaughterhouse. On the daily basis, the Baloch masses, the Baloch people, youth, women are being killed, are being abducted, or they are being tortured for, for the air. Baloch people have long been targets of so-called military operations, ethnic stereotyping and abductions by the Pakistani state, while it continues to exploit their natural resources. The situation is not highlighted by the local media forcing them to seek intervention through global platforms. The Committee to Protect Journalists on Thursday expressed concerns over reports suggesting that journalists are being targeted with arrest and criminal cases in Bangladesh. In a statement, the press rights body said it is deeply concerned over baseless criminal charges against journalists in apparent retaliation for their reporting, which has been perceived as supportive of the former government. It highlighted that more than 28 journalists are under investigation in connection with the unrest, with many facing accusation of crimes against humanity and genocide for their alleged involvement in the protest. According to local media reports, around 50 journalists have been sued in multiple cases, mostly on murder charges with different police stations across the country after Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's ouster. Information advisor in the interim government, Nahid Islam, who was key coordinator in the protest to oust Hasina, has also warned journalists who tried to legitimize her actions, which led to mass killings, will be brought to book. 
Moving on, Sri Lankans will vote for a new president in a tightly contested election on Saturday, with the outcome expected to determine the fate of fragile economic recovery led by incumbent Ranil Vikramasinghe, who is facing off with left-leaning rivals. The economy, which collapsed in 2022 after the severe shortage of dollars, is one of the key issues for voters who have struggled with inflation that soared to as much as 70%, a battered currency and power tariffs that jumped 65%. Although inflation cooled to 0.5% last month, millions remain mired in poverty and debt, with many pinning hopes on a better future on their next leader. The election is shaping to be a close race between Vikram Singhe, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa and Marxist-leaning Anura Kumara Disanayake. Whoever wins the election will have to ensure Sri Lanka gets its public finances in order, start repaying foreign creditors, attract investment and complete the four-year IMF program. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.